in the flesh. Chapter 3, In the Flesh. Written by the Reaper Cometh. POV Zeshi. Within the inner chamber of the slain Theocracy's treasury. Please, Zeshi, will you not reconsider your decision? The captain of the Black Scripture implores. Absolutely not, I hate the look of it, I rebuke adamantly without even looking up from my Rubik's Cube. But downfall of castle and country is an extremely powerful and sacred relic, for you to refuse using it based solely on its appearance is rather. He trails off. Is rather what? I spit out, daring him to continue. He bites his tongue. Please consider it, the High Council has deemed it necessary in order to strike a potentially decisive blow against the Sorcerer King. I finally peel my eyes away from the unsolvable puzzle and stare at the man before me with blatant disinterest. Ain's old gown, was it? I ask. Indeed, it is rare for you to have committed someone's name to memory so quickly, he notes. Simply because most people aren't worth remembering, I reply curtly. Is that so? It is. Why would I devote parts of my memory to remembering the names of insects? I mutter rhetorically. The names of insects you say, you know, I seem to recall hearing that one of the Sorcerer King's generals is a large insect-like creature, and would you look at that, I can't remember his name. He admits with a chuckle. I shoot him a glare and he quickly stifles his laughter. Him, well I will admit the Sorcerer King's existence has piqued my curiosity, especially after his recent excursion to the Holy Kingdom. I begin fiddling with the puzzle cube again. Yes, managing to subjugate that fiendish demon Jaldabath was a very impressive feat, the captain agrees. Well, I wonder about that. I muse apathetically. My eyebrows furrow ever so slightly at the confounding nature of this coloured box. So far, it has been the most challenging opponent I've faced in many years. What do you mean by that? The captain asks in an astonished tone. Why must this worm ask so many questions? Sigh. I heard that Jaldabath was pushed back in the re kingdom by three measly adamantite adventurers. So was he really that strong? I point out. Ah, so that's what you meant, E.S., evil eye of blue rose alongside Momen and Nabe of darkness, though I have heard that the three of them are adamantites among adamantites, he clarifies. HMPH I pout disinterestedly, then I ask you this, are any of those adventurers as powerful as me? I am hardly qualified to say for sure, Zeshi, but, while I believe you would be able to beat either Nabe or Evil Eye, because they are both simply magic casters. I wonder about Momen. Now I'm somewhat intrigued. What has he done to warrant such praise from you? I question. He has accomplished many great feats in a very small amount of time. Like what? Well for one, in a single night, he managed to slay hundreds of undead and thwart the plans of a fairly infamous necromancer. That can hardly be considered an accomplishment I snort with a yawn. And on the same night, he killed Clementine as well. Clementine, it sounds vaguely familiar, where have I heard that name before? As though reading my mind, the captain looks to me with a smile. Clementine was a member of our Black Scripture some few years ago, Zeshi. She defected. Ah, I remember now, she was around the level of an adamantite adventurer. No wonder I didn't remember her name. Oh right, the weird one who had a fetish for hunting down weak adventurers and affixing their plates to her armor, right? Am I supposed to be impressed that he squashed an insect like her? What else has Momen done? He also defeated a gigant basilisk. Well that counts for something, I suppose. I mutter in disappointment, if these are the pinnacles of his achievements, I have little hopes for him being a worthy adversary. And then he subjugated the wise king of the forest of Tob, also single-handedly. The what now? The captain sighs in exasperation. Regardless, Zeshi the higher ups have deemed him to be a powerful entity, which is why the high council has grown more and more worried since he swore allegiance to the sorcerer king. Did he now? I say, feigning astonishment. Yes, which is why we ask that you would don the downfall of castle and country, passed down from the late Lady Kyrae, 
and use it to seize control of one of the Sorcerer King's valued subordinates who frequents Khan village, the captain explains. Is this subordinate powerful? She is affiliated with the Sorcerer King, so that goes without question. You know what I mean, I hiss. The captain closes his eyes for a moment and leans against the wall, jutting out his tongue for a moment to lick at his lips before letting out a sigh. No, I highly doubt that she is as powerful as you are. Then I do not wish to participate in this ridiculous errand. I do not share the concerns of the High Council, and will not go out of my way to support their agendas, although I am a bit surprised by their hastiness. I thought they were too afraid of the Sorcerer Kingdom to attempt something so bold, I muttered dozily, letting out another yawn. Well, times have changed, we've come to realize that as more time passes, the more powerful the Sorcerer Kingdom will become. And our initial plans to harness the power of the Catastrophe Dragon Lord failed as well, so members of the Council have become restless. And Zeshi, you may find this plan has a significant potential benefit for you as well, he assures ambiguously. And what would that benefit be, exactly? After capturing the maid working at Khan village, we will demand that the Sorcerer King come alone and negotiate for her release. And what does the High Council wish to gain from this? Do they plan to somehow butcher him in cold blood? Do you actually want to know, the captain asks with a grim smile. No, I don't care. So, why should I be interested in this? Because if the Sorcerer King comes on his own, you can challenge him to a duel. And if you are pleased with his level of power, then you could potentially convince him to bless you with a child. I stop fiddling with the cube. But? I thought the Sorcerer King was undead? I gave up on wanting to have a child with him after I found that out, I seed bitterly. A child born from me, a godkin, and a supreme level magic caster, surely that child would be immensely powerful. Creating such a life form has always been a dream of mine, which is why I wanted to meet this Ain's old gown for so long, but now, that can never happen. Actually, with regards to that, rumor has it that the Sorcerer King has created a spell which allows him to freely manipulate his race, meaning he can likely become capable of reproduction. A rumor? I repeat doubtfully. Well, we have reason to believe it is the truth. One of our spies at Khan village actually heard this fact uttered from the mouth of the maid in question herself, while she was talking with the village leader. Hem, you idiot, why didn't you start this entire conversation with that? I chastise. The captain merely shrugs and scratches his chin resignedly. If there is still a chance that I could have a child with the sorcerer king, I owe it to myself to at least put in a little effort, right? Fine. I will wear the stupid relic and carry out your plan. Though I do not feel like doing so today, or tomorrow. I offer lazily. Well, I'll be sure to let the High Council know of your decision they will be pleased, Zeshi. Please make it abundantly clear that I am not doing it for their sake, I say with a smile. As you wish. Goodbye, then, and good luck with that he says jokingly while pointing towards the cube in my hands, before shutting the door behind him. The Sorcerer King. Huh? For his own sake, he better live up to my expectations. P.O.V. Ains. Somewhere in Nazarick. My eyes slowly creak open and I blink a few times, lethargically, adjusting to my dim surroundings. Uth I groan. My head feels like it's about to implode. Where am I? My chambers. Ain Sama. A chorus of voices cry out. I sit up slowly. Who? Urk! I cry out in surprise as I turn to the side and see four kneeling individuals at my bedside, all of whom are looking up at me with relieved expressions. Well, Kokaitis has a rather inscrutable visage, but I can assume from the clicking of his mandibles that he is relieved as well. What happened? I ask. We were hoping you would be willing to enlighten us in regards to that, Ain Sama. You suddenly collapsed, was it perhaps a side effect of your transformation spell? Demiage asks worriedly. There's absolutely no chance that the Guardians would be able to comprehend the situation if I told them. I was overwhelmed with distress signals coming from my testicles at the prospect of having 40 kids, think, Suzuki, 
What would be an appropriate explanation to warrant the collapse of the supreme ruler of Nazarick? Aha, I got it. I indeed. It is as you say, Demiurge. I suppose that this feeble human body could not properly accommodate my level of magical power, which far exceeds its biological capacity, yes, but it seems to have finally adapted to a satisfactory degree. Yet even now, I can still feel the immense pressure my energy is exerting on this body, threatening to rupture it at any moment. I explain with a confident nod. Nailed it. Ah. So that's how it is. Demiage exclaims. As expected of Ain Sama. Aura and Mare Chia. I know they mean well, but, man, it feels super lame being praised for having collapsed unceremoniously in front of everyone. Ains. Sama. If. It. Is. So. Strenuous. Perhaps. You. Should. Revert. The. Transformation. Now? Kokaita suggests. Silence. The other three guardians look to me expectantly. I was thinking the same thing as well, ain't Sama. Or perhaps even just switch to a less fragile body, perhaps that of a demon? Truly, a human shell is not worthy to host the body of the Supreme One. Demiurge reasons. That, I begin to say, is a valid point. Arth I may have gone a bit overboard talking up the inability of this body to adjust to my power. I cough into my hand. No, I will remain in this form for a while longer in order to fully adjust, for after all, if I can feel comfortable within a human body, then truly, I will be able to transform into any other race with ease. As the saying goes, he who walks the most difficult path will then be able to walk the difficult road with ease. I believe Albert San said those words s, I offer philosophically with a nod, hoping to sway Demiurge with the words of his own creator. Ah, I see. That makes perfect sense, Ain Sama. Phew. Now, to change the course of this conversation before any more troublesome questions are asked. Incidentally, how long was I asleep? 3 hours, 22 minutes and 23 seconds, Ain Sama. Demiurge answers. So precise. And wait a minute. Uh, you four haven't been kneeling at my bedside for all that time, have you? I ask hesitantly, though I feel like I already know the answer. Of course we did Ain Sama. Aura affirms. Uh. I mutter lamely. Surely they couldn't have stood statue still in such an uncomfortable position, just watching me rest for over three hours, right? Did, did you at least get up and stretch, at some point? Go for a walk? I ask hopefully. Nope. Mare offers happily. How? Could. Any. Of. The. Floor. Guardians. Even. Think. Of. Doing. Anything. Else. While. You. Were. In. Such. A worrisome. State. Ain Sama? I tilt my head to the side curiously. If that is the case, where are Albedo and Shalter? I question. In fact, I would have expected those two especially Albedo, to be the most concerned. Ah, he about that Aura laughs nervously, scratching the back of her head. Um? I raise an eyebrow. Okay, now I'm concerned. Demiage pushes up on his glasses anxiously, Ain Sama, as expected, those two could not control themselves properly, given your vulnerable state, and so we thought it prudent to remove them from the room. Huh? And by could not control themselves, you mean? I trail off uncertainly. They kept trying to lay with you. Ain Sama, Kokaitis interjects, candidly confirming my suspicion. It is as Kokaitis says, Ain Sama, 
after they each attempted to remove their clothes and jump on top of you for the seventeenth time, we had no choice but to restrain them by force, Demiage admits. Eh? Seventeen. Why did it take seventeen attempts before these four finally realized that those two lacked self-control? No, a lack of self-control can't even excuse them here, they tried to rape me. Seventeen times, no less. Also, how on earth did I sleep through all that? I see, well, thank you for protecting me, you for have done well. Restraining those two could not have been an easy task. There is no need to praise us, Ain Sama. To protect you is our most basic function if we could not even do that, our lives would have no value. Demiage explains. I wish I could have been protected from having to see Albedo's bush again. I catch Aura muttered despondently under her breath. An image pops into my mind after hearing that, and I quickly feel my face burn up. I cough divertingly into my hand. A anyway, well, I am awake and well now. I apologize for having wasted three hours of your time. I raise a hand as I notice Demiage's mouth begin to open in protest. It's time I act like a proper supreme ruler for a bit. Stop, I do not wish to hear anything along the lines of it, it was not a waste of time at all, Ain Sama. I have already declared that I have wasted your time and my word is absolute, is it not? I understand, Ain Sama, Demiage responds reluctantly after a moment of silence before pursing his lips. The other guardians' faces also reflect a similar look of consternation, as if the mere thought of watching over me being a waste of time is utter blasphemy. The expression loyal to a fault was truly created for the sole purpose of describing these hopeless subordinates of mine. Still, I do feel bad that they all actually knelt down on the floor with nothing to do for so long, as a good boss, I should make it up to them. Good. Then, to make up for the time I have cost you, I will grant each of you something you desire within reason, of course. Ain Sama. I raise my hand again. Demiage, do you remember what I told Sebas a couple weeks ago? Ruling over the selfless is sometimes displeasing, was it? I nod my head. Now, each of you, give me your request. Do not be humble. I will start with you, Demiage. In that case, Ain Sama, I would greatly appreciate a small sum of money in order to fund a personal experiment of mine. A personal experiment, you say? I trail off, bringing a hand to my chin. Well, it would be rather hypocritical of me to discourage independent research, but I wonder what it is that he's working on. Actually, never mind, I probably don't want to know. No need to pry. Though I suppose I should ask one thing. Demiage, this personal experiment of yours, will it yield any benefits for Nazarick? Of course, Ain Sama. Everything I do is for Nazarick. If you'd like, I can draw up a detailed report for you and... No, that is okay, I do not need to impose myself on your personal research. If it is for the betterment of Nazarick, that is good enough for me. Very well, take as much gold out of the vault as you need and have Sebas exchange it for new world currency. Is that acceptable? Of course. Thank you very much, Ain Sama. I nod my head before turning my attention to Mare. Mare, what is it you desire? You um, if it isn't too much to ask, a ain sama, then. He trails of meekly sir actually, I really don't need any. I will be displeased if you ask for nothing, I interject plainly. The druid, averting his gaze to the ground, begins to fumble uncoordinatedly with his staff between his undoubtedly clammy hands. T then, seeing as how I completed all the tasks that I was supposed to do today. Would it be all right if I were permitted to spend the rest of the afternoon reading in Nazarick's library? That's it? That is your request, Mayor? I question. His eyes widen fearfully and he quickly bows his head awkwardly. I, if that's asking too much to ask for, then. No, it is not too much, do not misunderstand my question. I was only asking because I thought your request was too small. Very well, Mayor. I permit you to use Nazarick's library to your heart's content for the rest of today. 
T thank you, Ain Sama, the boy stammers gratefully. Okay, that's two down. Aura, what is your? Aura, are you all right? I ask after noticing the fierce blush tinting the tomboy's cheeks. Why yes, I'm all right, Ain Sama. She replies in a particularly boisterous voice. She makes eye contact with me for the briefest of moments before quickly averting her gaze to the floor. What's the matter with her? Then, Aura, what is your? Ain Sama. If it isn't too much trouble, I? I. She suddenly cries out before trailing off. Aura. Demiage shouts with a look of horror, how dare you interrupt Ain Sama, especially when he's trying to reward you. Gah. I am very sorry, Ain Sama. She apologizes, frantically and repeatedly bowing her head towards me. It is all right, Demiage, Aura. Now please, tell me your request it seems something is troubling you Kai Press. A all right, here G goes nothing, A Ain Sama. I W would very much appreciate it if you W would be willing to wait until I mature a little more before we make any babies together. She cries tremulously, clenching her eyes shut while her blush intensifies to such a redness that would put even a tomato to shame. My jaw goes slack. Yeah. Did, did Aura really just request that I not be a pedophile? The other three guardians gasp in shock. Hey Aura. Demiage stutters angrily, how dare you ask something like that? If ANZ Sama sees you fit to bear his child, who are you to object? I'll agree. With. Demiage. Aura. That. Is. Not. Your. Decision. To. Make. In. Fact. If. Ain Sama. Were. To. Take. You right. Now. For. He's. Own. You. Should. Feel. Honored. Kokaitis huffs. A. Aura gasps. See Kokaitis. I shout. Warrior Taker Mikazuchi and Albert did neither of them program their creations with the understanding of consent or the concept of no means no. Forgive me, Ain Sama. If you wish to. To hold my hand right now, I would not object. Aura blurts out awkwardly. Half the fact that she still has no idea how babies are even made makes this whole situation even worse. I just woke up, I don't want to pass out again. Hey Aura, there is no need to worry. I will grant your request, and let it be known that I had no intentions of, er, uh, holding your hand any time soon, I conclude, nodding emphatically. A clumsy smile forms on Aura's lips, T thank you, Ain Sama. Then, moving on. I shout out desperately. See Kokaitis, what is it you desire? Yes. Ain Sama. I would. Greatly. Appreciate. It. If. You. Would. Allow. Me. To. Battle. With. Eight powerful. Opponent. You. See. I had. A. Small. Taste. Of. Battle. With. The. Lizard men. But. They. Were. So. Weak. It. Just. Left. Me. Wanting. More. And. I have. Been. Anxious. To. Battle. Seriously. Ever. Since he concludes with a determined bow. Hum, a strong opponent, is it? Did you have someone or something in mind? I ask. I would. Like. An. Opportunity. To. 
do battle with another floor guardian he states matter of factly him or the guardians fighting i don't really want to see that in fighting between my friend's children though if it were only a sparring match and another guardian willingly participated i suppose it would be all right hum and i would assume that in order to indulge your inner warrior kokitis you would prefer a guardian who fights close quarters who could push you to the limit as a warrior that would be wonderful ain sama he roars happily expelling a forceful blast of frost well that narrows it down to albedo sebas or shalter all of them are tough durable individuals so it should be all right i will consider it kokitis and get back to you on that later i'm sorry for not being able to fulfill your request immediately there is no need to apologize ain sama i thank you for your consideration excellent now that everything has been taken care of all of you may return to your duties i have somewhere i need to be right now do not disturb me unless it is an absolute emergency understood yes ain sama i nod and quickly activate the ring of ain's old gown sploosh ah forget what i said earlier greater illicit emotion is the best spell i've ever cast i mutter contentedly while lowering myself into the warm bubbling spring waters of the ninth floor spa resort the slime bath may have been a satisfactory replacement for a short while but my inner japanese has truly been yearning to once again experience a real bath i brace my head against the wall behind me and quietly survey the ridiculously large bath area around me why did they make it this big this place could easily accommodate over a hundred individuals, even if all forty-one of us had gathered here at the same time which would never happen this place would still feel empty. Oh well, I suppose having such a vast open space all to myself instills a sense of serenity within me. But at the same time it feels kind of lonely. I wish one of my old guildmates were here with me. I close my eyes and tilt my head back further. Maybe I should arrange another get-together with the male floor guardians again, everyone seemed to enjoy it last time, even though it got cut short because the girls had agitated Lucifer's golem by failing to comply with the bath rules. Feeling my head becoming cold, I submerge myself fully under the water and relish in the all-encompassing warmth. Finally, I surface and let out a happy sigh. I wipe at my eyes so that I can open them. Urk! I gasp out nearly leaping out of the bath. A albedo! I exclaim in surprise. Ain Sama! The succubus, sitting only a few feet away from me in the bath, replies in a cheerful tone, as if nothing is wrong. When the hell did she get here? A albedo! What are you doing here? Why, I came to gaze upon your magnificent form, Ain Sama! she says with a blush, turning her head away bashfully. You can't say something as creepy as that and then pretend to be all shy about it. Albedo, that is hardly appropriate, wah. I gasp out as she suddenly leans in closer, bringing her face within a foot of mine. Kia. Ain Sama, I love it when you get all flustered now. Please, do it again. De do what again? Eee, there it is, Ain Sama, you're blushing again. And no, I'm not. It's simply because the water is hot and I'm beginning to feel overheated. I lie, trying my best to look anywhere other than the top of Albedo's cleavage, peeking just above the water's surface. Perhaps you should get out then, Ain Sama. She suggests in an oddly happy tone. I narrow my eyes, why would she want me to leave her now? Something isn't right. Hum, perhaps I will. I say, as I begin to slowly raise myself out of the water, all the while studying the overseer's face. Wait, that glimmer of anticipation in her eyes. I stop rising out of the water, and as I thought, a look of disappointment flashes across her face. Aha! 
so that was her goal all along. And to think, I almost fell for it. As soon as I get out from this bubbly water, I'll be completely exposed. Hum so that's how it is, I muse in a regal voice, lowering myself back in the water. Ain Sama, don't you want to get out? Albedo asks in a seemingly sincere voice, though I can hear the traces of deceit in her voice. Albedo, I applaud your efforts, however, did you really think I would fall for something that simple? HMPH. She pouts, crossing her arms, as expected of the Supreme One, but she trails off, and her blush quickly returns. I arch an eyebrow. Then, that means you'll be staying in here with me for a while longer. She squeals ecstatically. Or oh, wait, perhaps this was her plan all along. I'm trapped. Uh, why didn't I at least keep the Ring of Ain's old gown on? Using, gate, or a teleport, would still require me to get out of the water. I suppose the greater fault lies in the fact that I decided to bathe in the mixed bath area. Irons, Sama. Albedo suddenly pants out in a seductive, heated whisper. W what is it, Albedo? Ain Sama, it's only the two of us, all alone in here, without any clothes on, doesn't that make you want to, do something? She cries out depravedly. Yes, it does make me want to do something. It makes me want to get the hell out of here. Ain Sama. Let's, let's make your first air, right now. She squeals, her wings unfurling uncontrollably, spraying water everywhere. No beating around the bush, huh? I look hopefully to the giant statue standing off to the side. Seriously, Lucifer. Spraying water everywhere with your wings doesn't count as breaking the bath rules. A hey, Albedo. I muster up my deepest voice, I order you to. Ain Sama, please. Even you have to admit, the thought of doing something so dirty in a place where you're supposed to get clean, isn't it arousing? She shrieks, and suddenly, she stands up out of the water, exposing her entire body. Speaking of beating around the bush. A hey, Albedo. I quickly avert my gaze. I can't look at her like this. She's like the daughter of my good friend Tabula. Oh Ain Sama. There's that adorable blush again. Even if you say no, I can see the lust in your eyes. You cannot hide it in this human form, Ain Sama. Your face, your body, are saying yes. And with that she leans down towards me, lowering herself on top of me. Why do none of the guardians understand the meaning of consent? I feel her pillowy chest press against my own and my heart skips a beat. It'll be over before you know it, Ain Sama. I feel a hand touch my inner thigh and I yelp, reactively jumping out of the bath. R-A-I-N-Z Sama. Albedo screams elatedly, bringing both hands to cover her face bashfully. I quickly lower myself back underwater. Feeling terribly embarrassed, I submerge myself underwater right up until my eye level, hoping to conceal my blatant reddening. Albedo continues to pant heavily, shuddering delightfully. It truly is all of a size befitting the supreme ruler of. I don't want to hear it. I shout out. A few minutes of awkward silence pass save for the overseer's fantastical, hushed mutterings. I saw it. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. Ain Samars. If I were to just stop breathing right now, would I be able to drown before Albedo could notice? She seems pretty distracted, after all. Suicide jokes aside, how can I fix this predicament? Suddenly, an ingenious idea comes to mind. Why didn't I think of this sooner? Albedo. In regards to your punishment for your earlier actions. And just like that, Albedo's disposition does a complete 180 save for her blush, which refuses to dissipate. Yes, Ain Sama, have you thought of a suitable punishment for someone as insolent as myself? Yes, the punishment you wanted to receive for failing to recognize me earlier. I say with a confident, almost maniacal grin. Indeed, Albedo, for your punishment, you will allow me to erase all of your memories concerning the last ten minutes. I cry out. 
the overseer recoils back in shock with a look of utter horror on her face, springing out of the water indignantly. En no please, ain sama. Anything but that. In fact, I would rather die than forget the sight of your glorious. Then, it is a suitable punishment for your transgression, yes? Urk. V very well, if that is what you believe, ain sama, she mutters lamentably as tears begin to well up in her eyes. Slowly, despairingly, she sinks back into the water with a quivering expression. Although I hate seeing her upset, this is perfect. All the embarrassment I experienced since coming to this bath can instantly be forgotten. Good. Now, Albedo, turn around. Understood, Ain Salma. I didn't know you could be this cruel. She pouts. She complies nevertheless, and promptly turns her back to me. I cautiously approach her from behind and place a hand on her head. Ah. She gasps, shuddering euphorically under my touch, nearly causing me to retract my hand. Is it even possible for someone to crave physical contact this desperately? Alter memory. I cry out. I close my eyes and begin combing through her memories, there. Her most recent ones. Before I delete it, however, part of me is curious as to how much she saw. Well, she definitely saw it all but, that thing is over two feet long. She had just seen it, and yet her memory of it had already become so irreconcilably exaggerated. A. Deleted. I remove my hand from her head. Albedo, how do you feel? I ask tentatively. She turns around with a dumbfounded look on her face, Ain Summer. W. What am I doing here? What do you mean? We were just talking about our military implementation plans within the Baharuth Empire, I lie. I is that so? In the bath, no less? She asks doubtfully, bringing a hand to her chin in flummoxed contemplation. I do my best to form a worried expression, indeed. In fact, you had just finished saying you were about to leave and draw up a full report for me, perhaps that would be for the best. The heat seems to be getting to you. I point out. Yes, I think I shall. I if you'll excuse me then, ain summer. She mutters in a slightly unconvinced tone while rising out of the water and turning to leave. I do my best to look away from her retreating form though she really does have a nice figure. What was it that Peroncino always said, despite his innate inclination towards Lollis? Ah, that's right, if a girl has curves in all the right places, my heart races. That may be the only aspect of sexual attractiveness that he and I share an appreciation for, he definitely had eccentric tastes. Suddenly, just before reaching the exit, Albedo halts in her tracks. She whirls around to face me, with a forebodingly crazed look on her face. Although, seeing as how we're both here, all alone, Ain Sama, perhaps we could. She begins hopefully. Albedo, I say sternly, as punishment for your earlier transgression, I will have you depart immediately without suggesting anything inappropriate. Since I also erased the part of her memory of me giving her a punishment, I can issue another to ensure that the same awkward sequence of events doesn't occur. The succubus purses her lips ever so slightly, deliberately, before nodding delicately. Ah, I see, very well Ain Sama, though I feel that is too small a punishment, she says worriedly. Well, it is the punishment I have decided to dole out. As I said before, your apprehension towards me was justifiable at the time. I believe this punishment is more than enough. Surely you have no qualms with my final decision, hum? Albedo smiles and bows her head in response, truly, you are too kind Ain Sama. Then, in accordance with your punishment, I shall leave without uttering another word. Excuse me, she says before turning around and finally exiting. Phew, crisis averted. Now to leave, before anything else can happen. Excuse me, Ain Sama, forgive me for imposing on your personal time, the voice of Seba suddenly rings out in my head. Can't a guy ever catch a break? I press a finger to the side of my head in acknowledgement of the he message. No, it is all right, I was just finishing up here. What is it, Sebers? 
are very good then, while I do not know if the current circumstance could be classified as an emergency. Fluda Paradine seems to have found himself on our doorstep. Would you like him to be disposed of? Eh? POV Fluda Paradine. Outside of Nazarick. Badump badump badump. I clutch at my chest. When was the last time this old heart of mine had managed to beat so fervently? Ah, I suppose it would have been when last I was allowed the privilege of feasting my eyes on the Supreme One's power, and he had so graciously gifted me the Book of the Dead. I press the tome in question, which I keep in the pocket of my robe at all times, closer to my body. I wipe away the small amount of drool that had begun to trickle out the corner of my mouth. The very prospect of being able to feast my eyes upon Ain's old gown Dono's magical energy is enough to make me salivate in anticipation. I only hope his majesty will not be too displeased by my forced eviction from the Baharuth Empire, but should he be willing to forgive me and allow me to reside here, I shall be able to peer deeper into the abyss of magic every day alongside him. Aha, huh? I cackle giddily to myself. If only Jerknib could even begin to understand the depths of my new master's power, he claims he understands, but he doesn't. Even if he were to unite the entire continent, nay, the entire world to rise against the Sorcerer Kingdom it would all be in vain. The Sorcerer King should be the most exalted being on the planet, and we should all be grateful for our very lives. Humanity would flourish under his rule, certainly, and our knowledge of magic would increase exponentially. Boom! A thunderous crash erupts a few feet in front of me, spewing chunks of dirt and dust into the air. Eventually, the dust settles down to reveal a small dark elf child, standing in the center of a small crater with a grin on her face. Ah! His grace has finally sent an emissary to greet me. Wonderful! Oh! Uh. Orasama, was it? I asked tentatively in a polite tone. Yepus, that's me. Good afternoon, Fluder Dono, she beams happily. Please, do not refer to me with such honorifics, I am not worthy, I reply. Perfect, that works for me. Nevertheless, you have been recognized by Ain Sama himself to be a very important person with great potential. So please, just call me Aura. Now. Ain Sama is curious, what has brought you to the tomb of Nazarick? His majesty has acknowledged me as one with great potential. My eyes are beginning to moisten in joy. Er, uh, Fluder, are you all right? The dark elf asks. Why yes, my apologies. Ahem, uh -huh, regarding the matter of what brought me here. I regret to say that I have been forcibly driven out of the empire by Emperor Jerkniv and wish to reside within his majesty's tomb. I plead. Him, well, normally I would be against the idea of a mere human living within the tomb itself, but you don't seem so bad. At the very least, you admire Ain Sama to a satisfactory level, and you aren't a complete weakling. She compliments, I suppose? T thank you. Indeed, I am unworthy, but I wish to be of service to Gaon Dono in any way I can. I assure. That's the spirit. Oi, Shulti, open the gate. She suddenly cries out to the sky. Less than three seconds later, a swirling purple gate opens up before us. This portal will take you straight to Ain Sama's office. Good luck, Fluder San. She cheers with a fist pump. Incredible, to think that such a small and innocent child possesses a level of power which far exceeds that of any adamantite class adventurer. Gulp. Will I ever be able to attain such power? Of course not, humans could never be that powerful. Gaondono is proof of that. But I would be overjoyed if I could be gazed deep enough into the magical abyss to be able to cast seventh or even eighth tier magic. Then I could truly die happy, knowing that I reached the absolute zenith of human ability. I feel my knobby knees begin to tremble anxiously. Deep breaths, flu der. I am most grateful, Aura, I bow politely before eagerly stepping through the portal. 